morning. Let me start with Ijaz Haider. Uh, Ijaz, uh, we've seen the statement by the Pakistan National Security Advisor uh, already, uh, in a sense, reposted by several key uh, figures of the Pakistan uh, establishment on Twitter, for example. Uh, is this what Islamabad was wanting to hear all this while from Washington? Well, uh, let's put it in a perspective. The first thing is that as far as we are concerned, this has been a double whammy on two counts. One, that there was an Arab who was hiding here and whose group has overtly declared war against the state of Pakistan. So there was a dilution of our sovereignty as far as that was concerned. The second was the intervention into our sovereignty by another state which is supposedly allied with us. And similarly, on the other count, there is a double whammy in which A, we could not find him in this compound, but let us not forget that there was a very elaborate CIA operation being conducted from a secret cell in Aptabad, which is again something that we did not know about. So as far as these two things are concerned, there has been an intelligence failure, not on one count, but two counts. As far as whether we want to hear this from the United States, that we did not know about this, and therefore that is supposed to give us some kind of consolation in terms of what has happened, and that we should be grateful, I don't think that that is how the Pakistani state should look at this. I think the US intervention it is an act which needs to give us space for or an urgent, urgent requirement as far as we are concerned to review the situation and to recast our relationship with the United States if necessary. And when I say that, what I'm referring to is the reestablishment of the red lines that have been crossed and that whatever response or responses that we need to develop need to be made credible. All right, you've said a lot there. Uh, you've also said that the Pakistani state does not have to act uh, grateful that Washington has finally, in, uh, or one official, a senior official in Washington has endorsed uh, what the Pakistani establishment here has been arguing for a while. Uh, we will look at how that statement by the National Security Advisor in Washington will go down uh, with the rest of the world uh, as well. Uh, we're hoping to talk to Ambassador Hossein Haqqani, Pakistan's envoy to America, in just a short bit. But let me get Casey Singh in here. Um, uh, Casey... Uh, what do you make of this? What do you make of the fact that, uh, that Mr. Donilon goes on TV and says that while Pakistan must order an internal inquiry to examine which network made it possible for Osama bin Laden to stay in Aptabad as long as he did, he has not seen any evidence of date that the leadership of either the political establishment or the security establishment knew this? Uh, Barkha, it was clear that in any case, U.S. were was always going to renegotiate their terms of engagement with Pakistan. I don't agree with Ajaz that the terms of engagement, the red lines will be restored. I think after the Davis case, Pakistan had gained a certain moral authority in which they were pushing those red lines back. But if we go to the Faustian bargain, which was done by Pakistan with US in 2001, the bargain was very clear. The bargain was that Al-Qaeda was absolutely a non-negotiable entity after which Pakistan had to go. And there were a series of Security Council resolutions, all Chapter 7. So it's not just U.S. and Pakistan. There are U.N. Security Council resolutions, which are called the Al-Qaeda resolutions, where any country is supposed to go after them and destroy that network. So Pakistan is, in a sense, in breach of those. Uh, now, the second question is of whether... Uh, I don't think there is any contradiction between what Panetta said. Panetta simply said that they were worried that there was unwillingness to move on the part of Pakistan. Therefore, they were not willing to share the information, afraid that like in the past it may get filtered out or advance warning being given. That is different from Pakistan's higher echelons knowing or sheltering directly bin Laden. There was still space between that. So I don't think they are contradicting themselves. But I have a feeling that U.S. is not going not going to re renegotiate the red lines. Pakistan's lost that ability to renegotiate them. There will be great pressure. Yes, they will save the top echelons. Uh, they will probably negotiate there that they will not point any fingers. 
Probably in due course, there may be a purge uh, at the higher levels in the ISI. It will not be immediate. But uh, whatever you've done, I've been hearing to uh, you're talking to ordinary people in Pakistan. Their reaction is understandable. This is how people react in any country. Uh, this is how the Arab world reacted after 9-11. Even today, they don't believe it, that it wasn't a Jewish conspiracy or that they had Arabs from Arabia or from UAE or from various countries who were involved in those things. So this denial would always be there. But that is a responsibility then of Pakistan and also U.S. on how to really convey it, what is, what is really the truth and what has happened. Uh, so this is where we stand at the moment. NDTV's cricket app, Android and iPhone. Faster scorecard, special analysis and much more. Download free NDTV.com slash apps.